Hey everyone, welcome to my new tutorial and it's finally here. I've heard all of your requests and we are going to make a car and specifically this will be fairly low poly treatment so let's make a low poly car and I picked the 65 Mustang for it and uh, what you see here on the screen is GT350 I've picked blueprint for the standard version of the Mustang and I'll show you how to set up a blueprint and everything yeah let's do a car but before we jump into that if you're fairly new to the world of 3D and Blender and you want more in-depth explanations step by step, you want more linear learning experience, go and check out my website polygonrunway.com. There are courses there that will guide you from zero to hero in shortest time amount possible. So if you're interested, please go check it out. And now let's jump right into this and let's jump into the layout view, empty Blender file and let's set up our blueprints first. So I'll just pick an image from my folder, you can find a link in the description, you can download this. And if at any time you're looking for blueprints, just google the name of the car and put the word blueprint in it. It should give you a lot of results, some of them are paid, some of them are free, but there will be a lot to pick from. So now I will hit 3 on an numpad for a side view and just drag and drop my JPEG image right here. And it should create this empty with image attached to it. This is not a plane, so this will not render. And I will hit Alt G immediately to reset its location. And right now we can just do a little setup. So let's go to the object data properties here and let's disable perspective. So we don't see it when we actually rotating around the car. And let's enable opacity and let's bring this down to something like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. That should be enough. And I'd like to and I like to check the front side only so we don't see it from the back and you will see why. And now I'll just press G and Z and place it right there on the axis at the bottom and then G and Y to place it like this. So we have a Z axis in between the wheels like this and now it's time to place the other views as well. So let's press Alt D, right click, I'll release this and press R, Z and minus 90 on the keyboard. And now if I press 1, I have that new image rotated facing towards the front view and I can press G, then X and place it like this so it goes through the middle of the car and bring it up to place it on the wheels like this here. And since we have a back view as well, we can press 9 while we are in the front view. That will just turn around the view so we can press Alt D again, right click to release and press R, Z and 180 degrees and move it here and place it down of course as well and align it a little bit better and now let's go again to the side view, so press 3 select this one, the original one that we did as first Alt D, right click to release and now I'll press R, Y, I'm going to rotate around Y axis and minus 90 degrees again and now if we press 7 on an numpad we should be able to see it from the top and it's aligned in the middle here so we'll just place it here so it goes through the middle of the car now if you press 1 you have car from the front 3 is from the side 7 from the top and 1 and 9 is from the back so this is the blueprint setup and we can now select all of them here and press M new collection and let's name it reference so we actually have a special collection for the reference only and if we now enable this button here we can disable the interactive so we are not able to select it and we are not able to see it in the perspective that's about the blueprint setup and now let's go ahead and create that low poly car and we don't need that much of a detail in the blueprint but the blueprint is very important for the proportions of the car so anytime you're building a car the most important thing is proportions if you get that wrong it looks all wrong you can have all the details you want but if you get your proportions of the car wrong it will just not work and what i like to do is to start with the side of the car so let's press shift a and i will add a circle here um, we can help ourselves with that shape a little bit and let's enter 12 segments here and now let's press tab to go into the edit mode and r y to rotate on the y axis and let's enter 90 degrees and hit enter and let's press s to scale it down and g to move it here so this will be the beginning of our fender 
and I don't like to extrude this manually so that's why I use circle and now we can just delete these bottom vertices so I'll press X and delete these vertices and now we can reuse this so let's select all of them let's press shift D and Y to move it right here in the back and now we'll just need to connect this somehow so let's select these four vertices down there and press F to fill and we'll create the face there and now let's select this edge and press F again to fill this and you can continue if you want like that we'll see how it works later and we have this line on the card there so it kind of fits and right now we can just select all of these edges here on the side and let's press E then Y and extrude it like this and let's press S then Y and 0 so we align and I will leave it like that for now so let's select these three on the back and let's press G then Y and extrude them let's press E then Y and extrude them like this and again we'll press S then Y and scale them so this will serve as a starting point for our modeling and now we can select all of this because it's sitting in the middle and let's hit 7 on an ampad to look from the top and we'll press G then X and move it to the side here okay so we have something like this in place and we can now go to the modifiers tab and add a mirror modifier and let's enable clipping for later and now we can continue building our model so first of all I would like to finish with the side here so let's check from the top and we can see here it goes we can see here it curves a little bit but I will do that later so far this looks all okay so what I want to do now is to finish with the side let's select these edges at the top let's press E then Z and extrude just like this and here we'll need some more geometry so first of all let's enable wireframe view and let's move some of these things around I will press G twice to move this back a tiny bit here as well and here we can go a tiny bit towards the back and we can shift all of this towards the back a little bit and then press Control alt shift s and shear it like this a little bit so we have that angle there and maybe we can move this towards the back a little bit more okay and now we'll need some more topology here there are multiple ways how to do that and right now I'll just press K for a knife tool and create a new cut right here just like this and this creates one triangle here but around the fenders uh, most of the time you can't avoid some of the triangles and I will do the same here so we have some more geometry to work with around the hood there and let's do the same here so I will do a cut like this because I can see here we'll need to bend this a little bit so we'll need definitely some vertices there and here as well so let's do something like that and now let's look from the front and I think we'll need to bend this a little bit so let's select the bottom vertices let's look from the front and let's press G then X and move it inside like this a little bit because there's a little bit of a slope and we can move this as well so we better match the shape of the car and we can push these vertices a little bit outside like this so in the end we should have something like this in place and what we are trying to do is to keep all of the faces as flat as possible so there are no distortions when we render with the flat shading that's really important here so now in the solid view I will add some more cuts here so I'll press ctrl R create a cut and place it here and I'll press S then Y and 0 so it's aligned and then press ctrl R click here and now I can just press E and F to flip it and align it with this on the left okay something like this and now let's select all of these vertices and we'll do one more extrude so let's press E Z and extrude all the way up here and if we now look from the front by pressing 1 we can see we'll need to bend this inside so let's press G then X and move it right there okay like that and now we'll just move some of these down 
to match that curvature so i'll hold z and toggle x-ray if you don't have this option here go to the preferences and look for the extra pi menu items now we can just select all of these and press g and move them down like this and here with that second row of vertices we can match that slope a tiny bit okay And here we'll need one more cut, so I'll press Ctrl R, click, then press E and F to flip it. And do something like this. And now we can bring this one up. Or rather, we can bring all of these three up and now this one towards the bottom. And here we weren't able to keep all of these faces flat, like I said before, because we want to maintain this line right here, but the vertices go down like this. So it creates a little bit of distortion on those faces, but let's not worry about that right now. This is really minor issue right now. I just wanted to put it out there that if you can, you should make them flat, but of course it won't be possible at all times. So now let's finish with the back and here in the blueprint you can see there's this dotted line and that's the outline for the trunk i think we'll need to keep this outer line here press g then y and move it here and now we can continue with these others and just push them out like this to match that curve and here we can go back and press g twice to slide it up and we can go slightly up here as well and we can slide these two up by pressing G twice. And now let's look from the top. So press seven on an unpad and we'll alt click this edge loop right there at the top and insert it slightly inside because we can see the cabin doesn't start right away. So let's press E then X and extrude it like that. Okay, that should work. And let's now select these two vertices right here and we'll extrude the door part and we can maybe add this one here. So let's look from the side and we'll press E then Z and extrude this up. And we want to match this shape. So let's select this one here, press G twice to drag it there. And of course, if you need more geometry, like probably we'll need here. So let's press Ctrl R, click here and we can press E and F to flip it and create a new loop right there so we are able to bend the door a little bit better and now let's select these two vertices press g then z and bring them down like that to match this slope of the cabin and now i want to bring them inside like this but you can see this would distort the cabin quite a lot because they are not in line instead what i want to do is to go to the edge select select this edge right here and hold shift s and snap cursor to select it and now if you hold period on a keyboard or if you switch here you are able to switch to the 3d cursor and now if we select these three faces you can press r then y and you can just tilt them like this rotate them and this will keep them flat so let's look from the top let's press r then y and bend them like this okay i think we are matching these angles quite nicely so something like this should work if you don't line up perfectly don't worry about that first of all this is low polycar so you won't be able to match all of the curvatures and sometimes these blueprints might have slight irregularities with their sizing and even though they might look that they are perfectly aligned it might not be the case but here i think it's caused by the curvature of the cabin because we are matching this point right here, but it goes a little bit wider here. That's why it looks like this. So don't worry about that. And now we can continue with the rest of the shape. And here, this will be a little complicated in the back because it curves inside. The most complicated part probably will be the front with the circular headlights. So let's tackle that first. Now I'll select all of these vertices and let's have a look at the reference. We can see that this is mostly flat here so we can go inside with our geometry with this point right here let's click it so it's active and we'll switch the pivot point to active element and let's press just r 
and rotate it like this. And again, I won't be like obsessing about matching it perfectly. And now we can select these two, press G twice and hold Alt so we can go outside with this and here as well. So we match this shape right there. And now we can select all of them again. Let's look from the front and here it goes a little bit down. So we can just press E and extrude it like this. This is what we got so far, but I can see it probably won't be the case up here. You can see that curve isn't so strong there. So what we can do here is to press Ctrl Alt Shift S, then Y and just bring it up like this. Okay, I think this will be better. And now we can continue with the extrusion. And since we have clipping enabled, we can just connect it here, press E and extrude, and we'll add a little bit of the geometry later. And of course, we'll need to press G, then Y and move it towards the front. So we match the curve of the windshield and here as well. And we have this shape right here, press Ctrl R to add a new loop and bring it here and we can just select this vertex press g twice hold alt and bring it outside like that so this should match that front end quite nicely so let's go back to the top view and we'll add one more loop here right click to release and bring this forward a tiny bit and here as well so we are matching those curves and here we can go a tiny bit back just like that and now let's look at that hood shape so i'll select these vertices right here and bring it up so we have that curvature there and maybe we can go higher here but here we'll need to bring this down so let's look from the side and i'll press r and rotate it just like this that should match it a little bit better now let's look at the windshield and basically i'll just select this edge right here and try to extrude it along we can help ourselves with snapping here so let's switch the snapping to vertex and i will enable auto merge here so all we can do now is press e and hold control to snap it right there and it will merge with that vertex so we are closing the geometry there and we can just extrude like this so this should create pretty flat faces there and we can just shift things around a tiny bit like this and let's look from the front and we'll probably need to bring those two up so let's press g then z and move them up to match that curve okay works fine so far and this is a little bit misaligned so let's look from the side and i think we'll need to bring this more towards here that should work just fine and now let's select this edge right here let's look from the front and we'll need to extrude that roof a little bit we'll need to eyeball it here a little bit because we cannot match that slope here in the front so we'll do something like this and now we'll just connect it let's create a new face here and let's press f to close it up and now we can just select all of this press e and by holding control we can snap it here and once more here and now if you look from the front if you wish you can just select these parts you know and bring them out a little bit to better match that outline and try to accommodate that i won't do that i want a little bit more of this flat design i won't be following that curves um, so precisely i think this is good enough if you'd like to follow the curves exactly you could just select edges like this you know look from the front and move them around to match this widening i won't do that here um, i will keep it flat so that blueprint again this is mostly for proportional purposes i will not follow it so closely and now we can continue with that roof and here i want to create this angle so i'll select this vertex right here press g then x and move it here and now let's press e and extrude it here and place it 
so it's easily connected with some nearby vertices and now let's do another one here one here and here we can try to match number of vertices there and now we can just close this up with let's say two vertices and we'll see if that will be enough okay and let's close it up right here now we just need to connect this somehow let's treat this roof because here by the snapping we went a little bit out of bounds there so we'll need to move this inside tiny bit like this and now let's connect these three or rather these four vertices with those up here so we can just select these four press f and then switch to edge select and then close it up with f like this and we'll need to figure out what to do here but i think we are missing some of the geometry so let's press ctrl r and add loop to the cabin right here it will help us to curve the windshield a little bit so we can just do that right now and push it towards the front a little bit not so much maybe we can do the same here look from the front and push it outside and now let's press ctrl r and create a new loop right here and again this will help us with that slight curvature and now we'll have easier time connecting this i think so let's try with this edge right there and let's press e and control snap it here and continue like this okay and basically we'll just bring it down by pressing g twice here as well and let's look from the top and we can try to bring it inside to match that curve a little bit better and i think this looks quite all right so we can now start to bring these down and let's try to connect it like this maybe this is too far so let's bring it inside and here as well so sometimes you need to eyeball it like this but i think this works nicely so far let's create a new loop right here let's look from the side we can bring it up a tiny bit and we'll do the same thing here so let's press e and hold control to extrude and here as well and let's bring it inside and down Okay, I've added one more loop so we can now close this up and we have some roof shape but we'll need to adjust the curves tiny bit basically what you want to do is to look from all of these sides and try to match it a little bit better you know fix issues and some irregularities I'll probably push this inside a little bit more Okay, and maybe align this a little bit better here. Okay, and I'm just doing some micro adjustments. When you look at the car from multiple angles, you will probably see those slight irregularities where you kind of need to push and flatten some of these things a little bit more okay works just fine so now we can close this triangle here and basically extrude the trunk so let's select all of these edges right there press e and we can hold control and snap it there and of course we'll need to align this a little bit better so we can select these press s then y and scale them like that 
and push him down. And I think this is almost straight up. So let's just select this, press S and Y zero, and now G, Y and hold control to snap it there. So it's straight. And now let's G then Z and snap. So this is the basic shape of the car. Now let's deal with that front end. So I will press one for a front view. Let's shift right click here to move the cursor there and I will place a circle. We are in the edit mode. So we are making this new circle part of that existing mesh. And here the eight sides will be enough. So let's enter eight. Now press R X 90 and we'll scale it down, but we'll need to turn off clipping for a second so it doesn't merge in the middle there and let's bring it here and now we can enable the clipping once again and let's press R to rotate because I want to align this with those faces you can see we are able to match these three edges right there with our headlight and we'll need to bring it to front so let's press G then Y and move it here and of course there is some slope happening there so we'll need to rotate this tiny bit like this to match that angle and now what we can do is to start connecting these so let's extrude some more geometry here we can see how our shape looks so far so I will select these edges there press E and extrude them down like this and of course bring this out a tiny bit so we have that curvature there and basically we just need to connect this to headlight so let's start by these parts right there and see how that looks and maybe here we'll need to create angon or create a cut here. I will see so far I will just create angon and then I will get back to that later. And here I think we'll need one more cut here like this and press F to fill. And here we can continue connecting just like this. Okay, looks fine. And here let's create a triangle. So this is a little bit messy here, but we can clean that up later for sure. So far, this is just the basic geometry we need. And let's move this down. Okay. Like that. So this is the front end and I think this looks fine so far. So we can try to close this up and do an inset and bring it out a tiny bit. Like that. And maybe bring this closer here. This one a little bit outside. And here I think we can get away with the triangle um, so far. So let's press J to connect. And I think what will help is to rotate that um, headlight a little bit. So I will select this part here, press R, Z and rotate it like this. So I think this looks much better. So let's try to extrude the fender and we'll need to go down a tiny bit again. So let's do something like this here. And I will bring this up here. Okay and then we can do a new cut right here and snap it so this is a little bit detailed part here but i think it's necessary to match this and we can bring this down and basically what we can do now is to select these edges press s then z to align them a little bit better and i think this looks fine so right now we can select all of these and bring them outside like this and down and now we'll need to close this up and I want to simplify this so let's press G twice and slide it all the way so it connects and merges there and now we can just connect these faces right there and bring this tiny bit up now and here you can either create triangle or find some other solution I will create a triangle for now and I think this will work. So that's the front end and it will look better when we enable smooth shading and then mark those sharp edges. So for the low poly vehicle like this, this will work just fine. So let's finish with the back here. 
as you remember, we had a little bit of a slope there. So we'll need to figure that out. And I want to simplify this as well. So I'll probably just create a new loop here. So I'll press Ctrl R and create a new loop here. And I'll press E and F to match that side slope like this. Okay. And now let's just bring those a little bit towards the front. So we are not distorting that much. Let's look from the top and just select these vertices here and bring them inside like that. And there's a little bit of a tail fin there. So we'll probably need to bring those down. So let's look from the back and we have this slope right here. So let's select these vertices and bring them down like that. And of course we can spread things out a little bit here. To create that little bit of a slope. I think this will work just fine. So let's now select all of these. And if we look from the side, you can see this dotted line suggest how the hood goes. So we'll just move it back a tiny bit. Extrude down like this. Do a little bit of a jump here and continue down. Okay. Just like that and towards the fender. We can simplify and kind of align this here. So I'll press G then Y snap it here and G then Z and snap it here. So that will align with this vertex perfectly. And now we can do the same. Press E then Z and snap it right here. And again here and G then Y and snap. We have these parts here aligned so we can easily just connect them. That will work. And here we need to do something to connect this part. And if we look from the back, there is a little bit of a space before the backlight start. So what I want to do right now is just extrude this on X axis and snap it right here. And just select this vertex, press G then X and move it here. And down as well. And now connect this triangle and here we'll just close this up. I know it's not that clean but this will work just fine for this low poly vehicle and we have one stray vertex right here so let's press G then X and snap it there and of course if you wish you can kind of bring them more outside so it's not that thick there just like this but you will create a little bit of a distortion. I don't mind that. And maybe this is too deep. Let's bring it out a little bit. Okay, I think this works. So um, that's for the bodywork and now we'll create wheels. So let's look from the side and I will create a new circle. And let's enter something like, um, let's say 24. Now tab in, press R, Y 90 degrees. Let's scale this down and I want to move it with the origin point. So let's move it with the object mode. Let's place it in the middle here and I'll tab in and scale it down. Let's look from the front and move it outside like this. Now we can press F to fill. Let's toggle the X-ray and let's do a little bit of that inset and move it outside here. Now inset once again. And once again, and move it inside. Just like this, maybe not so much. And now what we can do is extrude and we can poke. Now inset. And let's alt click this loop right here. Go to the select, check out the select and we can just extrude this inside so that will create some interesting wheel that we can use and we can now select the other loop extrude on x press f to fill inset once again 
and press G then X and move it out. We have some wheel here and we can add the mirror modifier now and we can use the eye developer to pick the bodywork as a mirroring center. And now let's press Alt D, Y and move it back. Okay, and now let's finish with some details like the fenders here because they are too flat right now for my taste. Well, let's select all of this. Now let's press F to fill to create a face there. And now we'll press I to inset and B to enable boundary and extrude it like this. I think we match. I think we match the reference. So let's press X and delete this. And now we can just slide these vertices around a little bit and select this loop look from the front and push it outside like that and maybe rotate it a little bit so it's not that wide at the bottom we have some nice fender there now let's do the same here i'll press f to fill let's press inset x delete faces and again we can slide these around a little bit to thin it out and then again push it outside rotate to match this okay that's for the fenders and if you render from position like this this would be empty or it would appear empty so what we can do is to select these fender loops and press e then x and extrude inside like that press s x zero to align them to actually have those fenders extruded inside and this should be enough to render it properly of course you can cover the bottom with some faces you can even create some kind of chassis there you can even put exhaust pipes there whatever you want but so far this is the base of the model and i think this video is already long enough so let's finish one little detail then i will show you how to shade this and then I will fast forward in time lapse and show you how I did the rest of the scene, the rest of the details, and I'll show you some nice render at the end of the video. First of all, I want to finish up with the backlights here. And what I like to do, if you did all of this work with your geometry, it would be shame not to reuse it. Or so you can just select face like this, press Shift D, right click to release, and then press P, enter to separate, and you have a new object with the same modifier and the same topology so you can now just split this press ctrl b to bevel press x delete faces and now you can just extrude some lights like this and then maybe add a little bit of the detail by beveling more this should work just fine that's how i approach details for example you can create door handles like this you can duplicate the edge separate it and then you know use extrusion and slide things around to really create some new details like this so that's what i want to do right now so let me check the position of this door handle it's almost fine so i will leave this here probably Regarding the shading, what we can do right here is to right click shade smooth. This will look ugly for a while, but if you go here to the object data properties and enable auto smooth, it will try to smooth things out for you. And this looks much better now, but it's not perfect. And sometimes, especially with a shape like the car, it's hard to find the angle that would match all of your needs. But what I want to do is to add 180 degrees. So this will revert back to that ugly look, but now we have full control over the normals. And what you can do is to go here and just mark the parts you want to be sharp like this and press Ctrl E for edge menu and click mark sharp. And that will create a sharp edge for you. What I want to do now is to go around this vehicle and mark the parts I want to stay sharp like this and this will create those distinguishable details that you need there here as well
now let's select this one here this is important edge and we can select this one here Okay, and I won't probably do a lot of those. Okay, here. Let's do one here. Okay, I think this should work just fine and now shade smooth the wheels and the 30 degrees on the wheels should be enough and I think I miss some sharp edges here as well and maybe here and one on the roof so let's do something like this. Okay, so that's your low poly Mustang 65. Um, I will now go ahead and proceed with those details and some shading and lighting. Um, I will fast forward the process probably to keep the video shorter. Um, it will be long enough, I think, um, anyway. And I'll see you on the other side.
So that's the simple low poly Mustang for you. You could see I didn't add a lot of more details, just some necessary things like mirrors and some trimmings and stuff like that um, to make it pop out a little bit more. I really hope you enjoyed this one. Um, I would love to see your results. So if you post something, just tag me as Polygon Runway somewhere. I always love to see your results. Um, if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see tutorials like this in the future, please hit that subscribe button and the bell button to get notified when I release something new. Thank you all for watching and have a wonderful day.